Rotating Magnetic Vectors This is one of those topics that's really easy to understand once you can visualize what a vector looks like. Of course, you can't see a magnetic vector, and that rather complicates things. We're going to start easy with a simple electromagnetic circuit. We'll sketch a series of drawings in two dimensions and then in three dimensions. We'll progress from the simplest magnetic circuits and we'll end by talking about three-phase motors. This is the simplest magnetic circuit I could think of, and you may recognize it as an inductor or as part of a transformer. It has a steel core with a section that's been cut out, and on the other end it has a coil of wire. This coil of wire is driven by a constant current source. Given these conditions, we have a magnetic flux that flows in the circuit. Now we could calculate that flux, but that's a problem for another day. Instead, we're just going to assume some values. Using the right-hand rule, we can say that there is a magnetic field that goes in a clockwise direction. For convenience, we'll assume this has a field strength of two Teslas. Let's make a table to keep track of this. We'll make two columns. In the first, we have the current, and in the second, we have the magnetic vector. As the circuit's drawn, we'll have current that's flowing in a positive direction, and we'll have a resulting magnetic vector, or B field, of two Tesla at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Now, we can reverse the direction of the current source. When we do this, the direction of the magnetic field flips. We now have a B field of two Tesla at an angle of 90 degrees. Now, this is a lot of work sketching these three-dimensional drawings. In the future, it would be more convenient if we could represent this as a two-dimensional drawing. The 2D sketch looks something like this. Nothing's changed, we still have the same magnetic circuit with the same coil, with the same air gap, and the same vectors. Again, our vector isn't very exciting. All we can do is make it point north or south, and we can change the amplitude of the vector. Our next step is to transform this magnetic circuit into something that starts to resemble a motor. For starters, we could split the coil into two different sections. We can then move these coils to other locations, and the magnetic circuit will not change as long as we keep the coils on the iron core. For instance, we might rearrange the circuit so that it looks something like this. Again, this rearrangement of parts does not change the magnetic or electrical properties of the circuit. All those flux lines are still traveling in complete circles. Things start to get interesting when we modify the core. We could provide a second path for the magnetic flux as shown here. This does change the magnetic properties of the circuit, but that's not important to our discussion right now. What is important is that all of the flux lines will still pass through the electrical coils. All of the flux lines will still flow through this air gap. Now that we've gotten this far, let's knock off the corners and make the magnetic circuit into something that resembles a cylinder. The two-dimensional result looks like so. While we're here, let's add a second set of coils and examine the resulting magnetic vectors that you can make with the second pair of coils. Now the original set of coils is shown as they were before. As you recall, the only thing we could do with our original set of coils was make this vector point north or south. With a second set of coils, things get much more interesting because now we can point east and west as well. And this is the best I can do for three dimensions. Again, it's starting to look like a motor. Let's make another table to organize our thoughts. We'll make three columns. In the first two columns, we'll show the current that's flowing in the primary and secondary coils. And in the third column, we'll show the resulting magnetic vector. Let's start with a positive current in the primary coil and we'll assume the coil is wired such that this vector is going to point straight north. For our next step, we'll turn off the primary coil and activate the secondary coil, and we'll assume that this gives us a vector that points to the west. Next step, turn off the secondary and apply a negative current to the primary. We now have a vector that points south. And finally, we turn off the primary and apply a negative current to the secondary, and that gives us a vector that's pointing east. Well, there you have it. We've gone and done it. We've constructed a rotating magnetic vector. With a little bit of work, we could actually make it point in any direction we desire. 
For example, let's say we want to point this to 45 degrees and we want to maintain the same magnitude. All we need to do is turn on both the primary and secondary coil and set the current source to 1 over root 2. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to show that we now have a vector pointing to 45 degrees with the same amplitude as we did before. What we just saw is very important. This ability to point in any direction and maintain a constant amplitude is the foundation of all AC motors. Before we end this video, let's clean up a few facts. This last sketch is a representation of the stator of a two-phase alternating current motor. And if we can have two phases, why not three? A stator for a three-phase motor would look like this. See that we have three sets of coils, and each set of coils is mechanically offset by 60 degrees. Just like the two-phase motor, a three-phase motor will make a constant amplitude rotating magnetic vector. I should mention that these stators, as I've drawn them, are rather antiquish. The modern motors and generators have wires that are embedded into the stators rather than sticking out like this. When we sketch the stators for AC motors and generators, we end up with something that looks like this. Here, each of the little circles represents a bundle or a coil of wires. And we always sketch these coils in pairs. Actually, they're not pairs anymore because they represent a single coil. If you've ever seen these sketches, you may have noticed the dots and the X's. Those represent the direction of the current flow. If you see a dot, that means the arrow is coming at you. It means the current is flowing out of the page. And if you see an X, that's the fletching of the arrow. So the arrow is flowing into the page. We can sketch the other coils as well for this three-phase system. And then we can make statements about which coil is activated and which way the resulting magnetic vector is going to point. But that's a topic for another video. Anyway, I encourage you to do a search for AC motor stator windings. I like this picture. Here is a large AC machine where the windings are being installed into the stator assembly. Just remember, the purpose of all these windings on these AC machines is to make a rotating magnetic vector that has a constant amplitude.